guys, today we are talking about housing tips for finding a house in Spain. This was actually a recommended video. Shout out to Ashish for the recommendation. So if you want to know about anything in particular, do not be afraid. Let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make a video about it. Housing is definitely something that made me incredibly nervous before moving. Simply because I'd never lived abroad before, let alone found accommodation for myself within my own city. Um, but I also really know how important it is to make sure that the place that you find to live is a home, not just a house, and that you feel comfortable and safe and nice. Um, but I did look at a lot of videos on housing before I actually moved, so I do hope that this video is useful for you. So the website slash app that I used is called Idealista. Um, there are others out there, but this is the one that I prefer to use. Um, it's got a wide range of options for you to narrow down um, your house search, basically. Uh, you can look on area, size, bedrooms, bathrooms, terrace, interior, which is like courtyard uh, view, or exterior, which is street view. Uh, I do know of another one that is also legit called Spot a Home. This one, however, you have to purchase before you've even arrived, basically, which is fine because, like, someone actually does go there to check that it's not a scam and, like, they make sure that the place is legitimate. But for me, that wasn't something that I was really into because I wanted to go and see it, um, see it with my own eyes because pictures, even if it's not a scam, don't always tell the truth. They're not going to take pictures of something that is bad in the house or the vibe might be completely different but also I wanted to go and see for myself the area that the house was in which you can't get from pictures at all. This brings me on to how you actually find a place once you do arrive in Spain. So I booked a, I took about a week to find a place so I booked a hotel for a week and literally was just doing my house hunt for the whole week. So I do recommend doing something similar, um, maybe a week, a week and a half. Um, I wouldn't leave it any longer than that because then you're just kind of taking too much time. And obviously you do want to be prepared when you are doing your house hunt, but make sure you do not do this too early. I moved in September and I literally started looking for houses in July. That's two months early. And yes, I was prepared. And yes, it is really good to look early, but don't look too early, too intensely. Because when I was looking in July, I made literally like a massive spreadsheet with where it was, my rating out of 10, how many bedrooms, how long it took for me to get to work. Pause. I don't know if you noticed, but there's actually 53 houses on this spreadsheet. And this is exactly what I mean by looking too intensely. And by the time that I moved, they were all gone. <laughs> Obviously. Even the ones that I... I'd seen like two days before I caught my flight had gone and then in the end when we actually got to the hotel we well we were looking from scratch basically as if we hadn't done any research before because all the ones that we had on our spreadsheet like were gone but that's not the bad thing necessarily because new things like new listings do come every day so like if you're making sure that you look every day then you can see what you like and basically you're going to have be the first eyes to see it and you're more likely to be able to grab the flat. So look, because obviously it's really important to look and understand like the pricing, what you're into, what you like and what you don't like, but just don't look too intensely that you get your hopes up because my heart got broken a few times. Although it is going to be a stressful situation, make sure you do not settle for the first one that you see. On our first day, we saw two Facebook advertisements and they just weren't cute to be honest. Well, they were nice. The first one had like a terrace and the sun was beaming and we were like, yes, we're in Spain, I can feel the sun. But you had to walk through one bedroom to get to the other bedroom. So I don't know why we were so like, oh yes, I'm tempted. Because what? who would do that? The second one was a woman who was renting about four bedrooms. So we would have taken two of them and the others would have been strangers. But the catch was that she lived there. So this is another reason why I wanted to go myself because they didn't advertise that you had to walk through a bedroom or that the landlord lived there. No, all they advertised, nice views of Rotero Park, terrace with sun. So obviously you're going to want to buy it, but when you get there you're actually like, okay, yeah, these are problems. But we kept this on our like list of options for a long time because we were so stressed and bills were included. 
But you need to think, would I accept this if I'm looking in my hometown? Probably not, no. On a similar note, don't be pressured by landlords. The, again, those same two landlords were like, yes, don't take too long to buy because it's gonna go in two, three days. Really? Are you sure? Because the rest of the landlords, they didn't care if we bought it or not, to be honest. Because if someone has a lot of people like lined up to buy and it's a good buy, they're not gonna warn you because they don't care who buys it, they just want the cash. So the reason why they were saying, oh yes, it's going to go was to scare us into thinking that like we wouldn't have another option and that, you know, basically they just were desperate for the cash. So although it is a competitive market, like it's not that competitive, which is another reason again why you should look early again, not too intensely, but you should look early because the first one with the terrace, I did actually see back in July and then I should have thought, hold on, why is this place still on sale? for two months obviously there's a problem or like it's undesirable for some reason and um, which it was obviously the bedroom problem and after we went on our tour the guy actually took us for drinks why to make us think that he was a nice landlord of course like you know what i mean the, it all adds up about the desperation so just really be careful um that you don't get pressured into buying something by a landlord because he was even texting us like after he was like yes it's going to sell in three days um, he was texting us a week after. Hi, are you still interested? Hi, are you still interested? So just be careful about that. Actually, my housemate has literally just told me that she was looking on Facebook a few months after we found somewhere and it was still on the market, <laughs> which is so peak. But again, it just shows, you know, just be careful. So as I mentioned before in my other video, Can You Afford To Live Abroad? Um, I'll put the link in the caption below. Um, I warned you guys about agency fees and how the agents will like sneak up on you, basically. Um, so our agency fees were 250 euros, which does add up. So just be aware that they don't always disclose, well, most of the time they don't disclose the agency fees right into the last minute. It probably won't be on ED List or any other website that you do use. Um, and literally, like, we only found out about them because the guy here was nice enough to actually say, like, okay, yeah, plus the agency fees during our initial tour. In another one, we didn't find out until we were about to sign. So just make sure that you ask the right questions about agency fees before, like, on the first tour so that you're aware of how much money you're actually going to spend. We did try and avoid agency fees by using, like, I don't know the name of the website, but, like, a Spanish version of Gumtree and we found this really nice flat uh we're texting the woman oh hey um we arrived it was on one tick and then this creepy man comes out and we were like hello who are you we didn't really speak good spanish at this point to be honest but <laughs> it was just a weird situation so we were like oh no we're waiting for this woman he was like ah oh, okay and then uh, we ended up going in because the woman was not replying and it was a woman, it was a man and his wife, I'm assuming, and we were going around and like they were following us closely as if we were a criminal or something and kept gossiping about us and honestly we couldn't get out of there fast enough. It was just such a strange situation. Like to this day, I have no idea who that woman on WhatsApp is, whether it's his daughter, I don't know. So for that, agencies can be a good thing. Don't avoid them completely because even though the agency fees can be expensive, they give you security, legitimacy and professionalism. And that's something that is actually pretty important when you're buying a house. So going back to the topic of like the flats rather than the landlords, be prepared to see some weird ones that you might not find in your where you live at the moment. Um, especially if you have a lower budget because they really try to like cram you in to get as much money as they can out of someone. Uh, I saw ones on Idi Lista, I didn't go and see them because I just couldn't do it to myself. But there was one with like a bed literally on a shelf and no door. Even though that wasn't like a studio or anything, other people lived in the house. So if you don't like privacy, like, or you don't care about privacy, maybe this is something for you. But for me, I like a door in my room. Another one is that they often actually don't have windows for lower priced things. So if a window is important to you, obviously like make sure that you're on the lookout for that. Um, hobs, often there are two rather than four. Sometimes there's no oven. 
So when you are looking, just keep a lookout for these things. So then you get to know what you like, you don't like, any questions that you need to ask. So don't be afraid to actually call the listings. Uh, Idi Lista does have a little box where you can message the landlord or the agency. More often than not, they didn't reply or they were just really late in replying, which stressed us out because we wanted to obviously fill up our schedules with um, housing viewings because we only had a week but by the like it was just really stressful because we they weren't filled but then after we got brave enough to call them that's when it started filling out and it was a lot better and we had like five six viewings in a day at one point be prepared though because they might not actually speak english to you on the phone or know how to speak english um so but don't be scared just do it because that really sets the tone from the rest of like your time here by being like brave and confident with your Spanish and that is how you improve. So even though it is daunting, like it's completely normal here. Um, so just be brave. And it actually like, even though our Spanish wasn't that good then, it really set the tone for the rest of our, I was gonna say vacation, but it's not vacation. The rest of our time here um, by being brave and like just being bold and speaking Spanish because then that's how you improve anyway if you're not, if your Spanish isn't not good. Really importantly, save the numbers of the landlords or the agencies that you do call because sometimes they might not pick up and they'll call you back saying like, oh, what property were you interested in? And sometimes I had to say like, I'm so sorry, I don't even know like what number this is. I'm gonna have to go check and call you back. Um, and it does get quite overwhelming because you're like answering the phones to numbers that you don't know at all. Um, so I just saved mine as like the street name and the number or something that I really liked about it. Like it had a balcony, things like that. Um, so that when they call you, you can be like, oh yeah, it was actually this one. And then you can arrange a viewing. Um, but once they do arrange the viewing with you, save it. Uh, so you can leave it as the same thing or save it as the landlord's name so you can greet them properly and the time that you're going to be meeting them just so that it helps you with your schedule organising too because after a while they literally all blend into one um, so that just really helped me organise my time and my day. So although I did say don't look too early, make sure that you don't look too late either because this is a really important thing, um, finding a house because you don't want to like look back and regret not spending enough time on it um, because like this is going to be your home for however long and it's really important to find somewhere that feels like home. Even if you're planning to like explore every day, you still want to come back and feel relaxed rather than stressed out about how much you hate your house or how much you didn't notice this one thing before you moved in. Um, but also just enjoy the time because it is an emotional roller coaster. but just go with the flow, you know? Thank you so much for watching my video. As I said earlier, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions for videos um, that you want to learn about. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!